Hello, this is Zach Burns from the Vanguard TV. Officer Lowe was the officer who stepped in after Officer Stanford went on leave. Marlene Santos has more information on Officer Lowe. Hi Trailblazers, this is Mona Lane Santos reporting with the Vanguard TV. Here at Lebanon Trail, we have welcomed a new officer to our community. I'm here um, at Lebanon Trail as a, just a temporary SRO to cover for Officer Stafford while he's out. I just started as a school resource officer about six weeks ago. Um, they had me assigned to the Kate Center, so that's the only other place that I've been as an SRO. Before that, uh, like I said, I was um, a patrol officer for about eight years. Officer Lowe is here to help uh, keep us safe and help keep our buildings secure. All Frisco ISD high schools have an SRO and so we're very fortunate to have them here with us uh, to help with little things such as a lost cell phone up to really big things that we need um, the law enforcement help on. So it's a great asset to help keep us safe and secure here while we're at school. Being a police officer for a high school it's it's different than being out on the streets where you deal with you know, adults and all sorts of different types of calls. Whereas here in a high school, you deal with, you know, high school students, teachers, staff, and admin, and whatnot. So it's, it's its own little city, I guess. He seems like a nice person. I haven't talked with him much, but he seems friendly. Officer Lowe is just now getting to know us and our students and what we're all about and what it means to be a trailblazer. I think Officer Lowe is great. He's been a great help uh, to us in the office and here at campus since he's been here. And I think he's getting along great with our students. I like how he talks with other students and he seems very interactive. And I've also seen him come into my classrooms. Well, I like to, you know, go into classrooms. I like to say hi to students. Um, I like to kind of see what everyone's doing. Um, just what everyone's learning. So interesting is, you know, I. I enjoyed picking up the violin, I enjoyed uh, working out with some of the students, um, just sitting in some of the classrooms to see what everyone's doing. This has been Mona Lane Santos reporting with the Vanguard TV. Recently our orchestra has been doing quite a lot with their spring trip and concert. Julian Canales has an inside look on orchestra. Lebanon Trail's Fine Arts Program collaborated for the Student Art Exhibition and Last Orchestra Concert of the Year. As visitors walked in, they were taken on a pathway through students' art pieces created by the Lebanon Trail art members. The concert was pop-themed, starting with the Philharmonic Orchestra performing pieces from The Hunger Games and the song Viola Hero. The Symphonic Orchestra followed them with The Avengers and The Incredibles. A 15-minute intermission was then taken in place for visitors to take a second glimpse at even more student art. The Chamber Orchestra followed the intermission with James Bond and Paint It Black by the Rolling Stones. Lastly, all three LT orchestras combined with the Wind Ensemble to perform multiple pieces from Star Wars. Congratulations to the success of orchestra students in their concert and to all art students who showcased their talent. With the Vanguard TV, I'm Julian Canlis. Our LTHS library has many secrets most students won't know about. Let's go to Jake Seal with VTV Cribs. Hi, the library has many different features that many people don't know about. That's why I'm here today to show you all of them. First off, there's a robot named Spiro. It's uh, pretty cool, it does really cool tricks. Uh, you can basically program it to do whatever you want really as long as it works on the iPad. There's also this robot named Ali. Um, yeah, that was a really cool. I know what I'm doing. I can't find it. Where is it? There's these ones, they're the Ozobots. Um, they follow marker, different colored marker that you can program. Uh, they also weren't charged and I didn't know how to use them. But you can. There's Makey Makey, this one I didn't know how to use. Uh, it allowed me to play Snake in a godlike fashion. And uh, I'm pretty good. Uh, there's Little Bits, little programming breadboard little thingy. Uh, that's about it. Now okay. onto the board games. These are fun. Play them, play them all the time. Battleship. Those, those are neat. It's, it's a dumb game, but like, you know, there's, there's, there's puzzles. Look at that. Wow, look, look. Many, many pieces. Freak. That's a lot so many pieces. How are you going to build them all? 
so much, so so much puzzle. Not not There's enough too many puzzle. Pieces. I can't do that. Get fit. You like like the bike. You know, like the desk. Go fast. Play some chess. Or checkers. I don't, I don't know. know do what you want. Get artsy with it. Make make some beautiful work. Do something cool. There's a whiteboard here just for you. Uh, so much stuff. Not enough space. It's right here. And then there's a green screen. You can put like whatever you want on it. Wow. Like a little project. Put yourself in Fortnite. Know. Make a make a music video. I don't care. I don't like. I don't. It's, I just gotta think like what the I'm world is your oyster. Wow, I'm flying. Yeah, I think I'm done here. <laughs> this is Jake Steele from. Oh uh, wait. This is Jake Steele reporting from Vanguard TV. Wait, is it is it from Vanguard TV? It is. Wait, wait, wait. Reporting with Vanguard TV, right? Football is in its midst of its spring season, and tennis is sending players to the state. Tulsi Burdick has the inside scoop on sports. Spring football is all about gearing up for next year's varsity seasons. The football team will be playing other schools in scrimmages and have been practicing hard. It was good going back into football because like, I got a lot stronger and faster and we didn't have contact for that long so I could like get my anger out on something. Man, it feels great getting back to football because we've been putting the grind all year in off season and now we just see it pay off. Right, I just look forward to seeing our team improve and uh, maybe get some wins. Our school's tennis team is wrapping up their seasons as well. Two varsity tennis players are going to state. Navia Junduru and Andrew Boverman are going to state for singles. Navia won first in regionals this year, and Andrew won second at regionals. This is Navia's second time going to state, as she won third in state last year. Well, it's clear that those players from state are used to getting to these big tournaments and everything, so these are guys who are like seniors and juniors and I'm a sophomore right now so this is this feels great and I'm expecting people to play a lot more freer than usual because what do they got to lose this is their probably last year at state their last chance so they're going to play much more freer much more normal tennis my 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 saying is always uh, try to walk away friends um, so uh, I'm just going to have a good time I've done everything uh, to prepare I've trained a lot um, I'm just going to go out there, play out the ball, and um, do what my coach tells me to do, and just play my game. Well, I think the team has, uh, one, lived up to my, lived up to my expectations. Um, they have performed uh, incredibly well on the court. They had some very tough competition this year, um, but they matured a lot over the year. Um, we've continued to improve throughout the year, and we're playing our best tennis now. The state term is going to be very tough. Uh, it's, it's the the best players in the state are there. Um, we you know we think we have pretty good draws and uh, we like the way we're playing. We're hoping to continue the the success that we've had uh, at the earlier tournaments and uh, our high level of competitiveness um, and our high level of play. We want to continue to take that down to, to College Station and. Um, you know, specifically, um, I think uh, Andrew is in a, a field with a lot of good players, um, but he's right there with him. Uh, if he can stick to his game plan, I think he's got a good chance. Uh, Navia as well. She's uh, playing incredibly well right now. Uh, she's playing with a lot of confidence. Um, so for her, it's going to be um, kind of a matter of, of uh, you know, playing her game and not waiting to see what the other girls are going to do. Uh, but like I said, we're, we're playing really good ball right now, and uh, we're ready to go. Keep up the great work, Lebanon Trail Sports. From Vanguard TV, I'm Kelsey Burdick. Good afternoon, Trailblazers. In an effort to remain the most innovative high school in the district, we are looking into implementing Mega Lunch to replace our traditional lunch time for the 2018-2019 school year. Now, what is Mega Lunch, you may ask? Mega Lunch is the model where everyone gets the same full hour lunch. Therefore, instead of having A lunch, B lunch, or even C or D lunch, everyone on campus eats from 12.05 to 1.05. Therefore, no one eats lunch at 2 o'clock and third period is no longer interrupted. For instance, here's a typical bell schedule for Mega Lunch. We will still look to incorporate homeroom next year in some form. It just may not be every week like it was this year. So, what are student options for Mega Lunch? Where can I get my food? Where can I eat? 
One of the biggest benefits is that students have more choice in how they spend their lunch time. Once you are out of high school, you will have the responsibility and ownership of choosing how to spend your time wisely. Therefore, why not start now? During Mega Lunch, there will be several lunch lines in the cafeteria open for students. The coffee shop will also be another option to get food, in addition to the various carts of grab-and-go lunches, similar to the breakfast carts in the morning. You can get your lunch right away, or you can go to a tutorial first, talk with friends, go to the library to play a quick game of chess, or even head to the practice gym for some three-on-three. -three. Again, you have the choice in how you will spend that hour. So where are we allowed to eat? You may choose to eat in the cafeteria, in the collaborative spaces, and in the main hallways. There will be some extra chairs and tables set up for you to eat, and you are obviously welcome just to sit on the floor. However, if you are sitting in the hallway in the academic wing, you are only allowed to sit on the side of the hallway with the bulletin board strip. You are not allowed to sit on the side with the lockers. In addition, if you are eating in the academic hallways or collaborative space, the volume must be a quiet whisper since tutorials may also be going on. Speaking of tutorials, are tutorials going to still be mandatory with Mega Lunch? Absolutely. If a teacher assigns you tutorials during Mega Lunch, you are required to go. How they assign you a tutorial may look different next year, but if a teacher assigns you a tutorial, you must attend. Will the tutorial be an hour long? No. Your teachers are amazing, but they are still regular people who need to eat lunch. Therefore, Mega Lunch is separated into two different blocks of time. A block and B block. There will be a bell to distinguish when A block ends and B block begins. Some teachers will eat during A block and have tutorials during B block, while some will have tutorials during A block and eat during B block. So how will I know when my teachers are available for tutorials? There will be posters of the master schedule for all teachers. It will indicate when each teacher has tutorials each day and when they are at their duty station or just unavailable due to eating lunch. Teachers will also have their own personal schedules posted outside of their classroom. This will also indicate if that teacher allows food in their room, if it is a closed tutorial session, or if students can come in just for a quiet workspace. Are there places we can't eat? Well, the fine arts and athletic hallways are off limits. Therefore, if you have a tutorial with a teacher in the fine arts hallway, you will have to get a special pass from that teacher to get to the fine arts and athletic hallways. The gym is another place you cannot eat. However, open gym is always available in the auxiliary gym. Please note, open gym is capped at 35 students. First come, first serve. The library is another place where food is off limits. However, you may go check out a book, work on homework, play game, etc. If the library gets too full, you may be asked to come back at another time. So what are the overall rules to mega lunch? Don't go or eat in off-limit locations. Fine arts and athletic hallways, no eating in the library or specific classrooms. Throw away all of your trash. We are trusting you to be mature and just pick up after yourself to keep our building clean. No off-campus lunch. Even though we have an hour, we still have a closed campus. You may not leave campus unless you are officially checked out and do not skip mandatory tutorials. So what happens if these rules are broken? If it is only a few individuals who are not able to handle the freedom of mega lunch, then the privilege will be taken away and they will have to eat a silent lunch in the lecture hall for that entire hour. If it is a bigger problem, we will take away mega lunch and return to the traditional model with the alternate schedule. So, why are we going over all the information now? We're going to do a trial of the Mega Lunch concept the last two weeks of school. We'll have our first day of Mega Lunch on Tuesday, May 22nd. Please use this QR code to give us your thoughts and to ask your questions, and we will answer them for you on our last homeroom on May 21st. We look forward to being the trailblazers of the district with this new lunch concept. Thank you for your attention today, and don't forget to fill out that form. Thanks for watching, Blazers. If you have any story or segment ideas, go to lthsvanguard.com. This has been Zach Bernies with the Vanguard TV. Have a great day, Blazers.